Okay, we're in section eight in vectors. Again, my encouragement to you is to make sure you get through the, um, the material on vectors that's presented to you in class. That's certainly outlined in the notes. Make sure you understand the uh, examples that we've given you. And then once you complete the supplemental homework, you go to the web assign, right? Now would be the Math 120 topic. I know it says 06, but I'll correct that, should be 08. But anyway, um, I think you should also, um, you know, try to uh, enter something in the discussion group that's productive. All right, so what do we do? Uh, we introduce vector. We introduce notation that we're going to be using for vectors. Typically, you know, which did in Math 119, you use the square brackets, and that was an indication of a matrix. Uh, now we're talking about vectors, and these are going to be um, either a row or a column. So we have a slightly different notation. Again, just reviewing what we talked about in, in lecture with this, uh, these, these brackets over here, all right? Makes like angle brackets, all right? We talked about the magnitude of vector V. The notation again is that bold letter, same thing you did in Math 119. In Math 119, you use uppercase letters because they were, um, uh, they were arrays that were, they, they had a number of rows and a number of columns. Now we're just simply doing a row or one column, all right? It's notation, that notation is the double, uh, the double lines there. Looks like the reminds me of the absolute value. It's basically distance, and we covered that in class. Hopefully, you understand that. We covered the addition of vectors. That's very similar to what you did, if not identical to what you did in Math 119. Scalar multiplication of vectors, just scaling it. We talked about special vectors, the vector i and the vector j. They're unit vectors. This is a you know one unit in uh, uh, the, the, the positive x-axis and one unit positive y-axis. Um, we talked about writing vectors V or, or whatever letter you're using as a linear combination of those two unit vectors I and J. Fairly simple to do. I typically go back to vector notation with the broquette though. I like that notation. We talked about um, the trigonometric form of the vector, um, you know, where V1, the component, and again, we point out what you mean by that, you know, V1, V2 had something to do with sine and cosine. And we, we drew pictures of that to emphasize that. Uh, we went through the law of cosines and we derived the angle between two vectors. It's a, it's a simple formula. This thing up here pops up a lot. We just simply wrote that down as being a dot product. And that dot product does pop up a lot in um, vector analysis. So bottom line, we had a formula over here. Uh, that's formula 22. They talked about orthogonal. Again, the word orthogonal means that the angles between the two vectors are 90 degrees. We went through the examples in class. Hopefully those examples were understood and you made sense out of that and you studied the material. All right, so we went through a bunch of them, right? Bunch of questions. Then we get to supplemental activities. My belief about supplemental activities, you should be looking at this material. You might be looking at a book, you might be looking at the web, you might be uh, you know, dealing, with, uh, dealing with your friends that uh, take a course that's similar to this one and studying the material, trying to make sense out of it. All right, your goal is to make sense out of what's being presented to you. All right, now we're in the homework. And again, it's your uh, objective to do the homework independent of me. Of course, I'm gonna work through the homework for students that wanna see those problems done. I'm gonna to switch to the whiteboard and I'm gonna do each problem separately. All right, give me one second here. I log into my, uh, my uh, iPad here. And I'll do a new share. Just give me one second here. Once you understand the material though, doing homework should really be quite simple, but just to reinforce, you know, your the, the, the material that we're presenting to you. And that's all that's all it is. Really not, not anything new here. Something as as old as time, by the way. Again, some students don't do homework and that really doesn't bode well for their future, uh, nor does it bode well for their education in general. All right, I think we're on the, um, the sheet over here. So someone says, oh, where'd the notes go? The notes should be in your possession, All right? We're doing, um, again, we're in this section on, um, on uh, vectors, we're doing vectors. And that's section eight of the notes. And we're doing problem number one and we're doing homework. Uh, what they give me, they give me an initial point. 
I'm going to draw a picture of this. No, you don't have to draw a picture. But this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. The initial point is going to be 0, comma, minus 2. So that's going to be 2 down. That's the initial point. And the terminal point is 2, comma, 9. Now, I'm not going to count the 9. I'm going to say 9's up here somewhere. And so I'm going to say the vector looks like this. All right, that's my vector. All right, now since I draw the picture, well, typically we like to visualize things, but if it doesn't help you, you shouldn't visualize anything. But it says the initial and terminal points of the vector are given. I did that. It says write the vector as a linear combination of those unit vectors i and j. Now remember when I'm at the board, I'm using this notation over here. I can't put really a bold letter down. And what is i? I want to point out what i is. It's this vector over here. And what's j? It's this vector over here. All right. So, you know, this vector over here, is, it's not in center position. So I have to move it. Right. So the, the way to move it is what you're going to be doing over here. I'm write these points down for you. This is a point. These are not vectors. These are points. The initial point was zero minus two. The terminal point was uh, two comma nine. So I mean, it's because I'm going to move it. And what I'm going to do, I'm basically just shifting it up two units. So I'm going to call, you know, you can say, what are you going to call the vector? I guess I'll call it vector V now in standard position. I'll use the bra cat notation. If I'm shifting this up to, I want to point out what I mean by that. This point here is being shifted up to. Well, this point here would be shifted up to as well. And if I did that, what would happen? Well, it's pretty simple to do that. You don't really need to do arithmetic to do that. But you know, the x coordinate's not going to change. But the y coordinate, I'm shifting it up two units, would become 11. I like that notation. But what they want me to do is write it down as a linear combination of i and j. What's it going to be? Two times the vector i plus 11 times the vector j. I'm going to put a box on that. But again, I think you probably know what I'm going to say now. Look at the answer key. Make sure you can agree with it. What does it say? 2i plus 11j. All right, let's go to number two. Again, this appears to be going too fast for you. Um, certainly pause the tape. Look at it. Uh, I do want to say that if it's really misunderstood, you probably didn't understand the lecture, you'd want to go back over and do the lecture then, all right? You can always seek uh, help also coming during office hours, combined during office hours. Right, I'm going to switch this up and I'm going to go to number two now. You should be relatively simple. What does it tell me? It tells me u, the vector u. And again, I want to emphasize in my notes, I clearly see that it's, it's a bold letter u. I have to put the bar above it. It's going to be 4i. Again, the i's in bold, minus 2j. What does this mean? 4 minus 2. I actually prefer the bracket notation. Then put down v. And that's going to be minus 3i uh, plus 5j. And what's that mean? Minus 3, 5. All right. Now, certainly, I want to read the questions to you. But you know, a says add the two vectors together. Well, these vectors are in standard position. It just couldn't get any easier. What do I do? Just add their components together. So if you add that together, four plus or minus three would be one and minus two plus five would be three. All right, I'm gonna write down an IJ notation. And the reason for that is they spoke in IJs. So I'm gonna answer in IJs. So it's gonna be one I plus three J. No box in that. I wanna to go to the key before I proceed forward and look at the key to make sure that's there and it is there. All right, let's go to B. Now, what does B say? It says U minus V, all right? Now, certainly addition is commutative, but subtraction is not. But the bottom line is for, you know, matrices or vectors, we try to write these things so they're addition problems. So I'm gonna say plus the scalar minus one times V, all right? So I'm gonna write down U and what's U? U is four comma minus two plus, what's minus one times V? It's three minus five. If you add those together, what do you get? Well, four plus three is seven. Minus two minus five is minus seven. So I'm gonna write down the IJ. Reason for that, they spoke in IJs. So it's seven I's minus seven J. Again, I'm not saying I can't make error. If I do, I'm gonna fess up to it. Let's look at the answer key and see if that's what they wrote down. Well, I'm looking at it and that's exactly what they wrote down. So I feel good about that. All right, but keep moving forward. And when I do that, it, certainly I'm gonna say that they're really not difficult to do, but you may find it difficult because you haven't reviewed enough. 
So I'll put this over here. I'm going to put down uh, the C, the letter C now. And C is, I'll write it down for you. It's two U's uh, plus three V's. All right. I, I believe I can do this without doing too much writing. And, you know, two, two U's would be, you know, I'm just looking at the first quarter, it'd be eight. And then three times minus three would be minus nine. So I'd say minus one. All right. And then what do I get? I get two, I do the second quarter, two times minus two is, you know, minus four and three times, you know, five is 15. So it would give me 11. Again, not beyond make a mistake. Remember this, I spoke in I's and J's. I want to answer in I's and J's. So it's minus I plus 11 J's. Now, could I have made a mistake? Of course. So I want to look at the K and I want to see if that's what they wrote down. And I'm seeing it. I'm feeling good about that. I want to move forward, put letter D down for you. And what's letter D? Not so bad. It's 3U minus 2Vs. Now, I'm not a stickler, but a lot of teachers are, and they want you to write this down as an addition problem. So it'd be minus 2V, all right? So I think I can do it. You know, I'm going to do component by component, and I like using the Brockett notation. So 3 times U would be 12. I'm using the first component. And minus 2 times minus 3 is 6. 12 plus 6 is going to be 18. All right, let's keep going. I'm not memorizing, I'm just reading. 3 U's, I'm doing a second component. That'll be minus 6. And minus 2 times 5, that's the second component, minus 10. That would be minus 16. Again, they spoke in I's and J's. I'm going to answer in I's and J's. So it's 18 I's minus 16 J's. I'm boxing that. I'm going to get my answer key. See if I got it right. I'm looking at it, and I'm definitely seeing that. All right, so now that was number two. Relatively simple, just practicing my addition of vectors, all right, and scalar multiplications, of course. Let's put this up and go to number three. Number three, I'm going to just down for you is going to be u, it's a vector, and that vector is 3i minus 1j. I like Brockett, that's going to be 3 minus 1. I'm going to write down v, and what's v? Well, minus 2i's plus 3j. What's that? Minus 2, 3. All right, what do they want to do? They want to do the dot product, u dot v. Right, pretty easy. What are you doing? You're multiplying their components together and adding them together. So write this down. So it's three times minus two plus minus one times three. What do you get over there? Minus six, minus three, which is minus nine. Put a box on it. Again, what do I encourage you to do? Look at the answer key to make sure that you understand the, that's the answer that you're staring at. So let's put down number four, not so bad. What's number four say? V is, and what's V? Minus five, minus 12. And it says find a unit vector having the same direction as V, right? So it, certainly the, the way we did this in class, we, we did, you know, we took that vector V and we divided it by the length of V. Now, some people say, oh, you shouldn't write that down because there's no division, but you could write this over here, one over the length of V times vector v, all right? It's really the same meaning. So let's, write, let's put the length down first. And what's that going to be? Square root of the Pythagorean theorem. Minus 5 squared is 25 plus, well, minus 12 squared is 144. It's not so bad. What does that give me? Well, that gives me 169, right? And I kind of recognize that. I hope you do too, is 13. So let's write this down. So it's 1 13th times minus five, minus 12, all right? And again, I'm, get, I'm, gonna write, I'm gonna write the answer down now, and this is gonna be the unitized vector. It's gonna have the same direction. And the answer here is gonna be minus five thirteenths, minus 12 thirteenths. I'm gonna box on it. That's what they wanna get from me. And again, what do we suggest to do? Look at the answer key. Make sure you can agree with it. And I'm seeing it, all right? And I feel good about that. That means I'm gonna move forward. I'm going to move forward to number five now. Five says V is minus five, seven. And then they use the letter W. And again, it's in bold. It's a vector. And it's minus six, minus four. 
And where they, they want to know the angle, um, they say, you know, V and W, the angle between them is, well, I'm, I'm going to write this down. Now, it's it, it certainly, someone said, oh, I can't remember that derivation. You can look back over the notes and it, it's not bad to do that. You want to study. You might say, I just can't remember. I can't remember. But uh, if you look back over the notes, I'm going to do it for you. It's on page 141. All right. And we'll say cosine of theta. All right. Is equal to, and they're using different letters, of course, but I'm going to use the letters I have over here. So it'd be V dot W over the length of V, the length of W. And again, I hope there's not too much computation for you. And again, on exams, we don't want you using calculators, but I'm going to do V dot W now. What's going to be minus five times minus six. And let's see, what's that going to give me? Minus five times minus six. That's going to be 30, right? Okay, that's not so bad. And then I got what? Seven times minus four. And seven times minus four is going to be minus 28. Put that down for you. All right. So you know, I guess I should do that. 30 minus 28, right? And what's that going to give me? 30 minus 28 is going to be, let me sure I make a copy of these vectors correct here. Uh, let's see, 30. Yeah, I did. Okay, put this down too. Let's do the length of V. It's going to be square root. And let's see, you've got over there. You got uh, the, the length of V is going to be, you know, 25 and 49. I'll put this on the side for you because, you know, minus 5 squared is 25, 7 squared is 49. And that's going to be what? Um, 64, right? That's not so bad. Let's keep going. And let's do the other guy. Let me get my ratio out because I don't want you know the grade square would thick over there. But minus six squared would be thirty six, right? And four squared would be sixteen. And that's gonna be uh, fifty two, right? Yeah, fifty two. Doesn't look so bad. I'm gonna write this over here as the square root of sixty four. That's eight, isn't it? Square root of fifty two. Square root of fifty two is kind of nasty, by the way. And I'm certainly going to say over here, cosine of theta is equal to, well, 1 over 4 root 52. If you'd like, you can try to look at the 52. Let me just get my eraser out here. I want to just put this over here. Erase that. Square root of 52, you know, 2 times 26. I guess I could say 4, right? I'll put this over here. So 52... This is not a central, by the way, but it's four times 13. So square root of 52 would be two root 13. I don't think this makes it any easier, but this would be one over, well, let's see, 52, the square root of 52 is two root 13. So this is eight root 13s, all right? Now someone says, well, what do you really want to know? I want to know the angle. And what's the angle going to be? Theta is going to be arc cosine of, one over four root 52. All right, I'm going to use a calculator. However, if this is, you know, certainly if there's a paper exam, I would say do not use a calculator, but I'm going to take my calculator out and I'm going to just clear it. Hope you hear me up touching the buttons over here. And I'm going to put in degree mode and I'll also put radian down too, though. So I'm going to press the arc cosine button. I'm going to find my calculator here. And I just found it. Uh, one divide by four, divide by the square root of 52. And I find that in my calculator. And I'm getting about 88, uh, let me see, 88.01 degrees. All right. Now, if you wanted to do in radian mode, let me change my computer here. Uh, I have a hard time seeing this, it's a little dark in the room right now. I'm gonna try to find the mode button on my calculator. Oh, right there, I see it now. And I can change from degree to radian. And I'll plug this in and if it was radian mode, I'll write this over here for you. I'd get the answer 1.536. All right. So what I want to claim is that looking at it, I know my answer to what I say is less than 90 degrees. Um, certainly 
I, I'd hope you'd realize that you can compute that if you wanted to, but um, if you drew the pictures, you'd also see it's less than 90 degrees. All right, number five. All right, we're done with that. All right, let's do number six. And what's number six today? Find a unit vector in the direction of the given vector. Well, it's really same old, same old. And I'm getting a little better at this. Let's write this one down. That's going to be one minus two unit vector, which is going to be the unit vector would be this over here. Again, some students are upset with seeing that, so they may want to write this down instead. And let me write that down for you. And what's the length of u? Well, that's going to be square root. And that would be one plus, well, minus two squared is four, right? And then u is one minus two. I think I can do that. And that's one over root five. So this answer would be one over root five, comma, minus two over root five. And we're using the bracket notation. Get my little answer key out. Gonna take a look at it. And I'm looking at that answer right over here. Things are looking good. All right, simple question, by the way. These are really simple questions. We're not drawing their pictures, by the way. We're just answering the questions. What's number six? Number six. Wait a second, I just did number six, didn't I? Yeah, I'm doing number seven now. Sorry about that. So I'm gonna say, do I wanna do six again? Not really. What's number seven say? Number seven says V is, I'll write this down for you, and five comma minus seven. And then they say W is, and what's W? It's three comma two. And what they asked me for, what's the length of V plus W? Well, I'm gonna recommend add V plus W together first. I'll write down the bracket notation. Fairly simple to do. Five plus three is eight. Minus seven plus two is minus five. And the length of this thing over here, let's write it down. Eight squared is gonna be 64 and five squared is gonna be 25. All right, we'll just give you 64, 69, 79, 89. It's root of 89. All right. So again, what I recommend here to do is just look at the answer key. Let me put a box list over here first. Look at the answer key to make sure you're staring at that. And we are. Okay, let's go to number eight. Looks like a relatively simple question. Am I doing the right questions here? Am I in the wrong section here? Oh, no, I'm doing the right thing. So, um, we're doing number eight now. It just question, question, it seems like such the same questions over and over again. And, you know, it, it's typical though. And I really do mean that it's typical. If you've paid any attention to what you're doing here at Essex, you start to realize that we ask the same questions repeatedly. All right, and I'll put U down and that's a vector minus one, three. I'll put down V is a vector minus five, minus four. I'm just copying at this point. I'm not answering questions, I'm just copying. And that's three minus seven. And I think I'm ready to go. And what's U minus three uh, these, right? Well, again, I'm not a stickler for details. This is A, but a lot of people, oh, you have to write this way as a scalar multiple of V. And I don't really believe that, but I guess you, some people you might have to. So I think I can do it without doing too much writing. So it's gonna be U minus three Vs. So it's gonna be minus one plus 15, which is 14. Okay, let's do the next one. It's gonna be three and minus three times minus four is gonna be 12. Three plus 12 is 15. I'll put a box in this. Again, I wanna to go to the answer key. See if we got that one right. And that's that's A, we got it good. All right, let's go to B. And let's see what B says. B says, what's the length of V? Couldn't be easier. I'm looking at it, it's gonna be 25 plus 16. Again, you have to know these formulas over here. That's gonna be what, 31, 41. All right, put a box on it. Again, I'm not saying don't make mistakes, but look at the answer key and I'm agreeing with it. Let's go to C now. And what does C say? Five W's uh, plus three V's. All right. I think I can do it. You can do component by component. Five W's would be, I'm doing the first component, would be 15. And three times is the V, by the way, would be minus five, would be zero. We'll look at the key later. Uh, let's see. Uh, five W's minus 35. And three times minus four is minus 12. 
minus 47. In the box. Let me look at the answer key and I'm staring at it. All right, let's go to uh, D now. D looks a little more complicated. Whoops. And it really does. And it's got three times five of the vector W's plus two vector V minus seven U's. Wow, this is going to be a tough one, isn't it? Uh, let's do one thing at a time. And I'm going to do, you know, what's on the inside first, those parentheses. You know what I'm going to plus, plus this, put this plus down too. This is pretty easy to do, actually. It's minus seven of the U's, which would be seven minus 21. Now we'll get to that later. All right. I'm going to put this over here though and see if I can do it. So five W's, right? I guess we did something like that before. It's 15, right? And two V's. Let's see. Five W's. That's what I'm pointing out over here. Five of these two of those. That's 15 minus 10, which would be five. We'll check it in the key later. All right, let's repeat. Five of these, that's minus 35. And two of those, which is minus eight, which would be minus 43. Yeah, nasty numbers, I guess, right? What's nice about having a key though, we can check ourselves. So it's going to be 15. That's not so bad. And three times minus 43 is minus 120, minus 129. And again, I want to repeat this. I am not beyond making errors. I make errors a lot. I want to fess up to them when I do. Let's see, seven, 15 and 7 is 22, right? And minus 129 and minus 21 is minus 150, isn't it? All right, let me make sure that 15, 7 is 22, minus 121, 30. Yeah, it looks good. Let's get my K. Let's see how I did. And I did great. All right. So let's see if we can go. And certainly I might forget what I'm doing. Uh, I hope not, though. It says write U. We write U. This is E now, right? Rewrite U. Well, let's say you can't remember what U is. It's not you have to remember it. You have to have it written down. And it's minus one, three. Then we're going to rewrite this guy as a linear combination of i and j. Well, I think we've done this many times before. What's it going to be? Minus i plus three j. The linear combination of those two vectors. Let's look at the k, see if that's what they've written down. And that's exactly what they've written down. All right, let's go to f. That's a little more complicated. It's a length vector. And again, I want to point out, you should have the notes in front of you, and this should be obvious what they're asking you. You're not asked to remember what U, V, or W is. You're looking at those things, all right? And that's so important you're looking at those things, not necessarily writing those things down, but looking at them. And this is letter F. Oops, let's go back to the black ink. Sorry about that. And what do they want to know? The length of V minus W. Now I know what some people say, I can't see it. I can't see it, I can't see it. It's on your paper, all right? That paper that we give you free of charge. What's V minus W? Well, it's gonna be minus five minus three, which is minus eight. So I'm doing V minus W, minus five minus three is minus eight. Then we have minus four, minus a minus seven, so minus four plus seven, which is three. And repeat this, I am not beyond making errors. What's minus eight squared? 64. What's three squared is nine. If you add those two numbers together, you get the square root of 73. Put the box on that. I wanna look and look at the answer key. And again, if I make a mistake, I really do wanna correct those mistakes. Looks like you did a good job. All right, let's go to number nine. Let me push this up. And what does it say? So find the angle between U and V. And what's U? Again, there's no need to write this down. It's in your notes, by the way. I'm just writing it down. I don't know, maybe because I don't want to look at the screen too much. And V is this. And what's it going to be? Minus four, two. 
notice the footnote there is footnote 57. I'm going to scroll down and see what 57 says. It says approximately to the nearest tenth of a degree. So let's go for it. What do you get? Cosine of theta equals u dot v over the length of u, length of v. Fairly simple computation. Let's go through that. u dot v is minus 12 plus 7 times 2 is 14. We'll do that a tip later. The length of u, well, that's going to be 9 plus, uh, let's see, 7 times 7 is 49, 58. That's nasty. What do you get over here? Length of v, which would be 16 plus 4, which is 20. Boy, that looks nasty. Let me go through this over here. Cosine of theta. I like to do arithmetic if I can do it. Minus 12 plus 14 is 2. Did I copy something wrong? I did. I did. I copied the wrong vector. How'd that happen? Where'd that come from? Three, seven. It's not three. I have to erase my work. You may wonder why I noticed that. I just glanced at my screen. I see the number six there. I'm going to make an erasure. I don't want to just simply say, oh, it doesn't matter. It does matter. It really matters greatly. All right, so it's six, seven. Let me put this over here. It's not three. It was six. And then it was, where did I get that from? Minus four, two. I guess I was looking at 10. I got them backwards and stuff. Well, I'm really going to erase everything. Oh, you know what it is? I'm sorry. I was looking at 11. I, I, I apologize. And I was looking at the wrong problem. This happens to me a lot, by the way. All right, number nine. And, yeah, and you're right about that. I, I probably should have paid more attention. Three, seven, and V. You know what it is? I scrolled down to the footnote, and then I forgot where I was in the notes. All right. So cosine theta equals U dot V. I'll go through this again. Length of U, length of V. And U dot V is going to be minus 12 plus 14. This is deja vu, huh? And let me give there nine plus, because three squared is nine, seven squared is 49, 58. And then minus four squared is 16, two squared is four, that's gonna be 20. Let's keep going, cosine theta. And you're gonna get two on top and 58. That's a nasty number, isn't it? So I'm gonna maybe put that down, 58. Let's see, 25, 29, right? Two times 29 is 58. And then, yeah, 20, it's not so bad, right? And what's that going to be? Well, if I looked at it, it would be four times five. All right, I hope that's not too bad, right? And let's take a look at that. And someone says, why would you do that? You know what? It's really not that important because I want to approximate it. And I guess what I should do, maybe I should multiply it out instead, because it'd be easier in my calculator if I did that. Two times 58 is 116. So let's this over here. Now I'm going to write down, you know, I, I am going to simplify it, but I don't want to put that number in my calculator. Kind of ridiculous, right? I'm going to get this eraser out. I should do some work. So let's take a look at this one over here. So I'm going to say, uh, let's see, 58 and 20. I just did that, right? The square root of 20 is going to be the square root of 4, which is 2 root 5. I'll write that down for you. Square root of 58 times 2 root 5. I think I can do this. Two's cancel. You got a 1 there. And let's see, 52 times 5. What's well, a little bit easier for me? It's going to be 260, right? Make sure I did that right. And five times 50 is 250. Yeah, that's pretty good. So what's, what's theta gonna be equal to? Write this down for you. It's gonna be the arc cosine of one over root 260. Of course, I've got to use a calculator to do that. And the question is, you know, you say you can't remember that footnote. I'll go back over it with you. The footnote says approximately to the nearest 10th of a degree. I'm gonna have my calculator on again because I can't do that in my head. And I'm going to mode. 
I'm going to switch it back to degrees. Make sure you can use a calculator. It's a kind of basic thing, but you should be able to do it. And I'll put this down and I'll write down arc cosine. And one divided by the square root, 260. And if I did that, I got a nasty number, but I'll write it down for you. But you know what? When I say nasty number, it is nasty number. It goes on forever. But here's what they said, to the nearest 10th of a degree, right? So I want to make sure you know what that means. It's to one decimal place. And what would that be? I'm going to just over here for you. I'm looking at my calculator screen, 86.4 degrees. Let me see if I did that right. 86.4 degrees. You know what? I noticed on my key, I might have an error over there, but it doesn't matter. It really, I, I, I guess what I should really do is check my key and see if I got the right answer or not. I do make mistakes. Three, seven minus four, two. Let me see if I did the arithmetic right. And let's see, three times minus four is minus 12 and 14, two on top. And let me see if I did this thing, nine plus 49. I'm just checking. 50, oh, I see it now. I see it, I made a mistake. And I have to go back and erase it. So I'm glad, I really am, I'm thankful for mistakes. I wanna put out where my mistake happened. I said 52, not 52, it's 58, right over here. Let me just cross that out for you, all right? Put this over here, get rid of it. Okay. And five times 58, a little more difficult, but that would be what? 250 and 40, 290. All right, I'll erase. Okay. And I'm going to use my calculator again. So I have to go up and do it again, right? Somebody says, I don't care if I make errors. And it really, it's not a good way to go through life. Errors have consequences. But this is 86. I'm going to my calculator screen now, by the way, 0.6 degrees. Okay. I'm going to get my red pen out. I corrected my errors. And I'm agreeing this was over here. And that's good news. All right. There's no mistake in the K. We put down number 10 for you. And I'll read it to you. It says, find the angle. Oh, I'm sorry, no, use a dot product to find the magnitude of you. Now, for a lot of people, I realize they're saying, why do I need to do that? Let's just go through it. And let's talk about the magnitude. All right, what does this go over here? Two, all right, and you get what over there? Minus four, all right? So someone says, what's the magnitude? Remember this over here. And what's that going to be? Well, if you look at it, it's we've done this many times before. Two squared is four plus minus four squared is 16. And what's that going to be? The square root of 20. All right. Now, again, you can simplify if you want. That would be four times five, which is two root five. So at least I know that. But they said use the dot product. Well, let's write this down. What's it going to be? Well, it's going to be the square root of u dot u. Let's put that down for you. They said use a dot product, which the same thing. What's that going to be? Well, if I look at it, it's two times two, which is four, plus minus four times minus four is 16. We get the same result. What's it going to be? Square root of 20, which is going to be two root five. Did I use the dot product? Yep, I used it. Where did I use it? I use it right over here. All right, is it the same thing as this thing over here? Certainly is. Let's look at the answer key where they say, they said, two root fives, all right? Let's go to number 11, last problem. And what does it read? It says find the exact value, uh, the exact angle between the vectors. Well, that should be easy. No capital use there. What's U? It's gonna be six comma seven. What's V? And that's gonna be minus three, one. Well, the cosine theta, is u dot v, well, six times minus three is minus 18. Seven times one is plus seven. We'll do the arithmetic later. The length of u, that's gonna be 36 
plus seven squared is 49. We'll do the arithmetic later. That's gonna be nine plus one. We'll do the arithmetic later. Let me keep going, cosine theta. Minus 18 plus seven is minus 11. That's not so bad. What do you get on the bottom? 36 and 49. That's gonna be what? Uh, let's see, 50, 85, root 85. Put this over here. And nine plus one, well, that's 10. All right. So I, I realize somebody says, I don't really care what that is. I do. I care what those numbers are. And we, we really do need to simplify them a little tiny bit. And I'm noticing that 85, I'll put this over here for you. There's a five in it. Now, five times what? Let's see, 10, 17, right? That's going to be 50 and 30. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And then if I look to the 10, it's really five times two. So really what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the square root of 85 and the square root of 10, which is really like five times 17 and five times two. Well, that looks pretty easy to do. I'm gonna put this over here, cosine theta minus 11. Well, root five times root five is five and 17 times two is 34, all right? Theta is going to be equal to arc cosine of minus 11, just the exact value, by the way, five root 34. They did not ask me to approximate it. This is the exact answer. Let me get my pen out, see if I got it right. And what am I looking at? I'm looking at that over there. All right, guys, I'm done with the homework. I just want to briefly talk about using Sage. All right, let me switch the screens over. And I'm going to share my desktop with you. And I'm going to go to Sage. All right. Now, certainly the whole point of doing Sage for you is so you can start to learn how to code. And Sage is a, uh, you know, massively, you know, important mathematical product. It's open source. And it relies heavily on Python. You know, so over here, at this point in time, I'm running Sage 9.1 and it's uh, utilizing Python 2.7.15. And certainly there could be updated versions. They updated a lot. But I just want to go through the code that's listed over here and make sure you understand that you can type this in. First thing is reset. I think we've done this a number of times. It's kind of clears out the memory. I'm going to say u is a vector. I don't, I'm looking at just reading it, vector. All right. And then if you know the notation over here, it's going to be basically a matrix notation, which is a row. That's all it is. And one, two. All right. Put that over here for you. Now, if I want to display you, Oops, sorry about that. I hit the, if I want to display you, it would look like that. Now, someone says it doesn't look right. They're not using bracket notation. They're just saying the vector standard position, uh, U would be one, two, all right? Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy paste this over here. I've done one, I guess I can do that. I typed the notes for you, by the way. Hey, let, let's display V2, all right? So three, four. What do they wanna do? Some matrix arithmetic, so two, star u minus three star v. I can do that. It gives me the result. I could have done that by hand too, though. I want to point out over here, I'm looking at this thing, and this looks kind of weird to me, but I'll be honest with you. It's very much Python-like. It's u. Then they say dot. Now, what's u? Use a vector. They want the dot product, all right? So I'll write this over here, dot product. This is a command, all right? And V, right? I'll put this over here. I'm just reading. The one says, why don't you just copy paste? Well, I guess I should learn how to type too, right? It says 11. Could I have done that myself? Of course I could have, all right? So you know, certainly I'm gonna put something down here. You know, certainly it's familiar to me. I think we've done a problem just like this. I'm gonna copy paste. Again, we're not asking to memorize this. We're not going to test you on it. That's not so bad. Wow, this looks really familiar. I'm going to just copy paste. Don't talk about it. All right. I know there's something going on over there. And someone said, what the hell just happened? I'm taking this data and um, I'm, I'm assigning it something. I'm assigning the arc cosine of u dot v right, u dot v, divided by the square root of u dot u, divided by the square root of v dot v, 
Uh, certainly, it's very familiar. It's something we've done in class, something we just did in the notes. All right. And I'm going to, you know, display theta, T H E T A. And well, I guess we just did something like that, right? And someone says, I don't like that number. You can get this to approximate that. And the way to do that is by, again, the dot notation N. Right, this is numerical, I want a numerical answer now. What I mean by that, an approximate answer. And let's see what happens. Let me see if I did that right, data n. And the server might have went down. Oh, no, it didn't, it's right over there. But let's say I don't like that. So I don't even know what that number means. It's a radian, right? So I'm gonna multiply by 180, it's conversion factor, right? And we're gonna divide through by pi and I'm gonna approximate pi. I want the exact answer, right? Yep, about 10 degrees, 10.3 degrees. All right, so that's done. All right, hope that made sense to you. Um, the bottom line, again, if you need additional help, please seek out help during office hours. And I'll be more than happy to help you. All right, if you want to use uh, Wolfram Alpha instead of my Sage stuff, you can do that. But you should realize that mathematics um, a most real world problems. We're gonna require a computer to solve, but I wanna point out the stuff that we're giving you class is really not requiring a computer. It requires hand computation. You're never gonna get to the computer level unless you can do really simple computations first. Again, I hope this has been helpful.